So go ahead and state your full name for the camera. Uh, Dr. Thomas Stanley Fortson. As a trustee, you have the larger responsibility to make sure that things are in order financially with the program, with what's stated. So we kind of monitor uh, our program, the stated program of uh, what they do regarding the teaching uh, of the Bible. Moody's been around for 130 years, and so we don't get into operations with the detail, but we make sure that uh, what we want the students to do and what we want them to achieve uh, is monitored and we are reaching our goals. That's a good question because we're all on a journey and we have a story to tell. When I talk to men, especially with men, you have to recognize that we don't all come from the same place. We're not all the same age, but one of the things I realize is that uh, we're all on a journey. I'm on a journey, I've been on a journey, and everybody has a story. That, that they tell. And my story, uh, many times, is like other guys, and in a way, it's, it's different. Uh, I grew up in a home. My parents were married for 55 years. I'm the uh, uh, second born. My, uh, my older sister, I mean, she kind of <laughs> ran the, the household. But uh, it was good because, uh, you know, I learned how to deal with conflict, you know, as a result of having an older sister. But also, uh, one of the things that I think is unique, and like I said before, we're all on a journey that's unique about uh, my family, <clears throat> that uh, if you want to know a little bit about me, you, learn, you need to learn a little bit about my dad. My dad came from the South. His father, they had to leave, but I never understood that story about why he had to leave uh, Georgia. But uh, when my dad um, was born, uh, his father, which would have been my grandfather. He died at an early age, I think, when my dad was uh, eight. So basically, my dad grew up without a father. The significance uh, about that is not that I didn't have a father, but uh, of the four boys in my father's home, they never had someone to tell them that they were loved from a man. And so when I grew up, I tell... Uh, as I tell my story, my dad had a hard time telling me that he loved me. Now, I found out that he loved me. I found out uh, certainly through my mother who gave me the encouragement, but dad had a hard time talking about that. But without understanding that he didn't grow up with a dad who told him that he was loved, my dad had a hard time telling me. He told other men. That's the unique thing about my story. Like I said, before everybody's on a journey, but he would tell other men in the community, I'm so proud of my son. He did this and he did that. And I used to call him and, and uh, tell my mom, I said, Mom, why didn't Dad tell me he's proud of me? In Little League, for an example, I remember, and that was something about myself. I always wanted to please my dad, not Mom. <laughs> mom was always, oh, I just love you. you know, I'm encouraged. But I always wanted to hear from my dad. And I remember <clears throat> in Little League, uh, and he, he went to my games. And I remember one occasion, and it's memorable, even at uh, uh, 69, it's memorable that uh, this one game, I didn't want to walk. Everybody was walking. So I remember, I said, I'm not walking. I'm going to get a hit because my dad was here. And so the count, true story, the count was uh, three balls, two strikes. And I said, I'm not going to walk. So I reached over the plate on the, this pitch and hit this ball and it went over the right field fence. I'm telling you, I could, this is, I'm talking to you right now, I can see it. So I'm coming around first base. I'm coming around second, I look in the stands. My dad is out of character. He's jumping up, now that's my son. That's my son. He's telling everybody, that's my son. So came home and, uh, and we we're getting in the car and I just knew dad was gonna tell me how proud he was. I got in the car, he didn't say a word. We drove all the way home and he didn't, he didn't say anything. Didn't even say it was a good game, son. So I remember, and this is, uh, uh, I'm about nine years old, I guess. I remember going into my mother and I was crying. And I'm saying this for a reason. Because his mom, dad didn't even say anything to me. He's telling all, all of the men how proud he was. And my mom said, you know, your, your dad is so proud of you. I said, he told me what you did. He's so proud of you. So I'm hearing it from mom. 
but dad never said it. See, it was significant, it was important to me that dad was saying, and, and so for years, I didn't understand my father until I got to the point where uh, my mom said to me, and I don't know why she said it then. She said, no, you're, you're just like your dad. I said, what do you mean, just like my dad? He said, uh, you are. You see, he didn't have a dad to tell him that uh, he loved him. And that's why your dad doesn't tell you. He doesn't understand that he needs to tell you because he never received it. And uh, <clears throat> from then on, that was significant uh, with my father. Now, I want to end the story and, and just to tell you how significant that was. So I'm 48 years old, and I'm working for this organization in Denver, Colorado. And I get the call that my dad is sick, uh, and um, he may not make it, so you need to come home right away. So I came home. I flew home, got on the plane right away, and flew home. And uh, Dad was, that was sick. But I wanted to talk to him, just he and I, because I, didn't, I think well, this may be it. He, I may not. He may pass. So he was in a wheelchair. So we went to the mall. I'm pushing him around. And uh, I wanted to tell him, Dad, I need to hear you tell me you love me. Now you have to understand. <laughs> I'm 48 years old. Why is that significant? Because I needed to hear my dad tell me. And he probably told me at one point, but I can't remember. The aff I needed the affirmation. And I have, could not have uh, remembered any time that he, would, that he told me. But I did not want him to pass without me knowing or hearing that he loved me. So to make a long story short, we get back in the car. I put the the uh, wheelchair in the back, I put him in the front seat, put the wheelchair in the back, I'm thinking, man, I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know? And I look back on it, I'm thinking, man, this is crazy. But it's something I had to do. So, uh, before I started the car, I looked over at my dad, he was looking out the side window. I says, Dad, I need to hear you tell me something. He says, what is it, what is it, son? I says, Dad, I keep him out in 48. I need for you to tell me, I need to hear you tell me you love me. And I'm thinking, I thought, wow, I shouldn't have said that. And what seemed like uh, eternity, <laughs> he looked at me and he said, Bobby, that was my nickname. He said, Bobby, I love you. I said, thanks, Dad. I love you too. <laughs> and that was the end of the conversation. Because I wanted to hear from my father, not my mother that I was loved. And so that's my journey. And I think that a lot of young men and even older men need that affirmation from another man and especially their father. And I recognize this as I have uh, talked with other men, been around other men, you get in a dialogue, that they had a similar story but there was no father uh, in their lives. I had a father. And uh, to this day, I know he loved me, and I loved him. But what was missing was the dialogue and the affirmation that he gave others about me, but never, not never, but just I didn't hear enough of it uh, from him. So I think, and I can see that uh, in life with other young men, and even older men. You know, when you talk about, hey, tell me about your, your father, there might not have been a father. Uh, you got to recognize that. And sometimes you don't ask the question as you uh, dialogue with them. But uh, in working with men in an organization that I worked with for 15 years with Promise Keepers, with was just working with men, I realized the significance of dialogue between a father and a son. And I have a son. And if you ask him, does your dad tell you he loves you? And he's, oh, dad's always telling me this. Well, why is that? And it's unnatural for me because, like I said before, I'm like my dad. But why I know that he needs to hear that. And I know he will never, if I, when I pass, he will never say, I never heard my dad love, tell me. He won't be able to say that he never heard it because I did it deliberately uh, and I did it for a purpose.